this is the British Motor Museum just outside Birmingham and celebrating Britain's contribution to the world of motoring and it is indeed a very impressive collection but of course this being a 4x4 channel I'm going to look out for 4x4s which means Land Rovers lots of Land Rovers but for me personally this is something special because all my life all my life all my adult life I have looked forward to seeing one particular vehicle because as a, as a child I was besmitten with Range Rovers and particularly with Range Rovers that drove from Alaska to Terra del Fuego uh, at the southern end of South America and after all these years here is the actual vehicle itself. I finally get to see it after all these years. It's a bit, it's a bit, uh, I made models of it when I was a child. Um, I, I, it was, the, it was, it was everything. It was, it was why I do this. It was why I, I got so involved with four wheel drives and it was this, this vehicle doing that trip. And I finally get to see it at 57 years old. And as I was obsessed with Range Rovers, and a young lad, single, thought to myself, you know, one day, just one day, I might do an expedition such as this. The Darien Breakthrough. The expedition to drive from Alaska to Cape Horn, first done in one run, single run, by the British Army driving to Range Rovers. Very battered. Now this bracket was there was an there was an exhaust pipe that ran all the way down here, down here, and connected onto this exhaust pipe here. That's been re been replaced, but that's the bracket from the original exhaust pipe. And these aluminium ladders could actually take a, a uh, the weight of a fully loaded Range Rover, and they were used for crossing rivers and launching onto rafts and uh, man they're battered it's a it's a wreck well this is authentic these tires they're called firestone town and country radial and they were truly terrible my dad had them on his vehicle and when it used to get wet it, the vehicle was a was a nightmare to drive it used to slide all over the place and michelin tires actually were commissioned to build a tire for the range rover with the load rating with the speed rating and they built uh, a, a tire for it but it was only available <clears throat> after about two to three years of Range Rover production. Early buyers like my father had to put up with these terrible terrible tires. It really is quite something to see it in the flesh but the British Motor Museum houses what is undoubtedly the finest historical collection of Land Rover and Jaguar cars anywhere. Being financed by Jaguar Land Rover this is no surprise time now I think though to walk around and take it all in. Taking pride of place as you walk through the door is Land Rover number one. This is the very first pre-production Land Rover number one. This was a 1953 Land Rover Series 1, 86-inch uh, wheelbase for the Royal, it was a Royal Ceremonial Vehicle, so um, Her Majesty and her family would have sat or stood in there. Painted in the Royal Family's signature burgundy, here's another one. 
This 1974 Range Rover also a royal ceremonial vehicle. This 1949 Land Rover Series 180 inch station wagon is very rare. This is the very first production Range Rover built. And probably this vehicle is worth close to a hundred thousand pounds. Nicknamed the Pink Panther, this is a desert military 109 inch wheelbase Land Rover Series 3. This vehicle I have never seen before. It is called the, the Gatti, built by Nuffield in 1947. At the end of the Second World War, the War Office, together with the Fighting Vehicles Research and Development Establishment, began to plan for a standardized range of British-built military vehicles. The smallest vehicle in the range was to be quarter ton, this one. I guess history has, uh, well, We've forgotten about this one, didn't we? I thought the Land Rover was so successful in that very role that this vehicle was just a non-starter. This particular Land Rover was used for a crossing of the Bering Strait. These vehicles were being driven around the world, the long way around. Now this is interesting. The trailer is powered, built by Rubery Owen. And there you can see the drive shaft and the power takeoff on the back of the Land Rover 101. The 101 was a military version uh, of the Land Rover forward control. It had Range Rover, early Range Rover axles and Range Rover differential, center differential and transmission. You know, walking around these exhibits, I'm filled with a tinge of sadness. It's like a passing of something great. Land Rover no longer make adventure motor, motor vehicles. I mean, and look at their heritage. Their heritage is uh, as significant as any manufacturer in the world when it comes to off-road, overland, four-wheel drive vehicles. It's as rich as any, even Jeep. But now look at them. They're making luxury cars. They're not making off-road cars anymore. And I think that is just sad. There's far less land in Land Rover than there has ever been. The British Motor Museum also has a number of private collections and uh, I bet there are lots of Land Rovers there too. In some ways this is the best part of the museum. It's a large covered parking space with hundreds of historical vehicles. You have to look quite hard to find the interesting ones but look at this. 1976 Land Rover 3 88 inch the one millionth Land Rover built the very last Land Rover series vehicle to roll off the production line in 1986. The vehicle that ended 26 years of non-stop production of the Range Rover Classic. This is the very last one built in 1996. Of course the idea for the Range Rover began with this. This is the Road Rover. It was actually based on a Rover chassis. It was not a Land Rover, it was not four-wheel drive. So I look at this and think, well, this is a really, really good way of making an ordinary car worse. The Range Rover took another 15 years to come alive. Long wheelbase, Land Rover LSE. This was the Queen Mother's car. This is His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales's Range Rover TDI. Complete with its own oil spill. This is a 1994 P38, the very first to come off the production line. 
This is Her Majesty's very own 110 1983 model in a very dark green. A 1982 Series 3 aluminium finish. This was the North American version of the Defender, distinctive by its exterior roll cage. In my own personal quest to find the world's most beautiful car, coming in an incredibly close second, in fact they're neck and neck, is the E-Type Jaguar.